to AWARE. We are dedicated to communicating information that inspires your positive growth and change. Are you interested in a peaceful planet? Are you interested in optimal health? Are you living with purpose? Are you enjoying your life? We realize each person can make a difference, and our mission is to empower your awareness. The choices that you make in every moment shape your life, and we encourage you to realize that you have your own answers and to always listen to your own truth. We invite you to stay aware. Hello, this is Lisa Gar, host of The Aware Show, and it is my pure joy and privilege to be here with you today. It is my honor to allow you to come into my life and me to come into your life to be able to share whatever time you're watching this wherever you are we get to be in this space together so thank you so much for joining me this has been an incredible time of awareness a time of anger a time of unrest a time when voices need to be heard that have been silenced I'm finding us at a place where we can't unsee what is happening in our society around systemic racism, around, around oppression, around violence. We're not going to unsee it anymore. And that's where we are. And that's why we're having this conversation in a healing conversation, because we get to move forward. We don't go back. We don't go back to sleep. And I'm so grateful for the absolutely most moving, incredible, every time I see Lisa Nichols speak, I, she brings me to tears. She always has. It has been this way since a decade ago when she was on my radio show where I couldn't even talk. Something about when Lisa speaks, speaks to my soul and it cracks me open and it does to so many millions of people who she has served through her incredible platform of motivating the masses, um, from being a, string, a single struggling mom on public assistance to being a millionaire entrepreneur, best-selling author, just incredible, incredible potential that she has that you get to match when you see her speak. So I'm very, very grateful to welcome my friend Lisa Nichols to the show. Thank you for being here. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. My pleasure. The moment you asked, it was an easy yes. I, I'm so grateful for that because you know my reaction every time you speak. I, I'm a blubbering fool. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you spoke once at TLC and I was just streaming and you open my soul when you speak. And I'm so grateful for that gift in you. Yes, I'm grateful me. for it as well. It's, it's when the God, the God goddess and me touches the God goddess in you. And um, it's hard to put words to it and our souls open up. And uh, there's no better time right now than... Uh, for us to allow the divine in ourselves to touch each other. So I'm glad to be here yes. with you. Yes, and the healing. And so we have spoken before about, you know, dreaming big dreams. We've talked about the law of attraction. We've talked about so many things in the past around your work. And these are all incredibly necessary conversations. And they really apply, especially to people who are struggling from the economic downturn of COVID. And we're going to get to that conversation as well, because we need to remember to keep dreaming. But right now, there is another systemic virus that has been happening for much longer than COVID. It's mm -hmm. 400 years longer than COVID. And yeah. I want to talk with you about that virus now. I want to talk with you about, about not only where we go from here, because that's, that's a later on conversation I want to talk to you about where we are right now. Where are we right now? What do you um, feel is happening? Tell me. So um, we are we are at a place now where we're about to put our foot in history. How do we operate when when you and I have heard the stories about? Um, our leaders, or we witness some of it, whether it be Martin Luther King or Mahatma Gandhi, Cesar Chavez, Mother Teresa, Nelson Mandela. And we, we hear of those pivotal moments in time where 
people had an opportunity to get on the right side of history, to define who they are going to be in our history uh, journey. This is that time. Uh, in the midst of a pandemic, which was going to make its own history, then we had this um, uh, very um, necessary, uh, heartbreaking uh, experience again. Um, and this time, because we were already slowed down, we weren't busy being busy, being busy, being busy anymore. We were already slowed down. We were already on quarantine. We already had our attention, the television, the news, the, the life. We, we were the people like me who travel 280 days out of the year have been homebound for 90 days. All of a sudden, um, we saw it. And more importantly, um, or I should say equally, you saw it. Um, this is not a new experience for Black mm -hmm. America. That's what I was saying is you cannot unsee this. Now everybody's eyes are looking yep. at this huge systemic problem. And it is, I finally believe we're not going to go backwards. And I actually hope the protests continue for all year, uh, for as long yeah, as we absolutely. need them to. Absolutely. Well, you have yeah. to know that in, in our history, um, right before every critical necessary change in our society occurred, it was preceded by a protest. So protest is the process for improvement. Um, so I just want, I, you know, we, we think protest also, no, protest is a voice being heard saying, I am not invisible, you must see me. And I think that protest, peaceful protest, is required, but consistent protest is required. And then you take it from the streets to the pen and paper. You take it from the pen and paper to the voting polls. You take it from the voting polls to the commissions. Like it, it is something that needs to occur for the next five years. What I want people to realize is that it's important, but it's not it's not urgent that it, it's going to stop in two weeks. It must keep going. It must oh, groundswell. Yeah. It must transition into how we vote. Uh, it must transition into what we call our mayors and our, and our commissioners to do. It must, it must transition into how we support the good cops, how we support the good mayors, how we right. stand behind them. It, it, it has to transition to even... You know, I was thinking, what are the things, I know you're probably going to ask me, you know, I get excited. What, what can we yeah. be doing? You know, um, I, I want to be a bridge for our white community. You know me, you know how I work, you know that I recognize we are different. Let's not say we're not different. That doesn't, that doesn't feel good when someone who is privileged, who don't have to worry about their skin color and being let into rooms, say we're all the same. No, we're not. We have a human spirit, we have a heart, they beat alike. But when it comes to our skin color, we walk in the room, our name is Lisa Lisa, right? And when we walk in the room, they don't see the same person. They see a white woman, they see a black woman who have the same name. So after that, then we begin to look at how can we in our differences, how can we learn how to coexist and co-create together? One of the things that I, 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 I'm developing an action list, I'm inviting every white person who, who truly is about anti-racism and you don't know what to do. I, I understand from the perspective of being, being committed, but unclear. What's my action? Um, I want you to find solace that you have community you have community and black people. You have, so this isn't us against them. And please don't allow those few people to make this a us against them thing. This is a justice thing. And there, yes. there are many, yes. you know what I mean? This is a justice yes. thing. And so there are many white people like you and others who want justice. There are many black people who are saying, let me hold your hand. And let me educate you so that you're aware. Not to make you feel bad, though. Like the doctor said, when the doctor has to poke the needle in you so that it, it, he, he gives you medicine, the doctor says, this might hurt. Yeah. So yes. As yes. you get yes. educated, as you get educated, just be aware it's not the intent to hurt you, but mm -hmm. the education, the awareness 
this might hurt. Can you still, will you still hold my hand? Will you still walk that journey with me? And, and also the other thing that I hear a lot is I don't know the questions to ask. I don't want to poke the bear. I don't want, first of all, it's not a bear. It's a human. Secondly, yeah. let me help you. Let us help you. Let the allies, the friends help you. I've gotten so many calls from my friends saying, help me with the questions asked. So I start creating the questions. Here are great questions that you can ask if you want to listen, you know? Yes. I, you know, I thank you for this because I, in my opinion and in my experience and in my heart and in my soul, I have only always seen your soul, Lisa. I don't ever identify us by the differences of the color of our skin. And I know that by saying that, it will also, it, there's an unconscious that I wasn't aware of, that I've now become aware of, that we do have a difference of skin. And, we, and I've watched so many great, you know, just opinions about my unconscious experience yeah. of the fact yeah. that we have yeah. to, and, and I've, I, I used to you know, say, look, I see, I only, I see soul and I see right. into your soul and I see how your soul cracks open my soul. And I've known that for ever since I have spoken with you. And now, you know do, you, now do you see yes. how with all the love you have, that's a privileged statement um, because I you totally only have see that. You only have to see soul. Um, in the room that we walk into, when we have the pleasure of getting together twice a year. That makes me I sick, see though. That soul. makes me But, but makes here's me what sick. I need you to understand. There hasn't been any time that we haven't been together that I didn't see soul, but I had to also see skin. I had to. Okay. I don't have that luxury. I don't have the luxury to not see it because because it's seen with me. It's always, and I'm not saying that from a victim perspective. I, you know, I walk in my power and my authority. I walk in my honor, but I've also, I'll be blindsided if I didn't. I, mm. I would be caught off guard. Mm. So many things that you don't see because you don't have to see them. And, and here's what I want to invite all of my white sisters and brothers to do is to be willing right now to not understand it. Like, and that's hard because we want to comprehend everything to say there's something I'm not going to get that, that, that when my sister Lisa walks in a room, they see two Lisas, right? They see two Lisas, but she doesn't have the luxury of not seeing skin. She, she, in the place that you and I go to, you know, I'm one of the few African-Americans there. I'm, I'm one of less than a handful there. And for a very long time, when I was in that space that we're talking about, that's near and dear to us both, Mm -hmm. I I remember having to justify constantly why I was there. Uh, And I was okay with that. I was okay with that only because I'm, I'm used to it, not because it's right. And so, um, now you're being made aware of what's been happening the entire time. I, and I, what, I cannot <laughs> tell you how sick it makes me, Lisa. It makes me mad. It makes me angry that I didn't, that you have to, you had to deal with that. I, I mean, I say, I, say, everything, I am, say everything you feel, say everything you I feel, Lisa, because so what this is you're disappointed. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for that experience, Lisa. I'm so sorry. I've never seen you anything but absolutely, enormously, incredibly beautiful. And here's just here's what I want you to hear. Here's what I want you to hear. Here's what I want you to hear. Because it's really important. Because I see so many of my friends like you going through this right now. And I think what you've begun to do is you've begun to allow your love for me to be questioned. And that's not what's being questioned right now. So I want you to separate. And I want every white person who truly has been about humanity, 
Now, if you haven't, and you, you've lived under a rock and you've lived inside of a divisive conversation, then you get to be educated that the time has come no more. No more. Right. No more. It's done. But for those of you, and, and, and I know I, they're my sisters and my brothers here who are African-American. I, I hope you understand what I'm saying now, and I, I believe you do. For my sisters and brothers like you, Lisa, I get that there's a, a level of awareness you didn't have. And, 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 and it came from a sense of privilege, but it didn't come from a sense of intentional unconsciousness. I just don't believe that. I believe that, right. that some people are, don't even know what you're unconscious about. And then there are those who choose to remain unconscious, who choose to push away consciousness. And, it, and, and, and then there are those so there are different levels. You know, we say white, black as if it's one bucket for both. You know, it's not one bucket for both. Um, there are different levels of awareness. And, and I'm not trying to give anyone a pass, nor am I trying to pin anyone against the, the, the wall and say shame on everyone. It's not the case. Um, when we talk about moving forward and we talk about how do we move forward, what I want to invite you to do is not take up real estate in guilt. Don't take up real estate and feeling shame, like feel it. So, you know, you are alive. I will never feel this again. I will never be yeah. this unaware again. I will never be this disconnected again. I recognize this is you, not me. I recognize that I am privileged, but it's my social responsibility to check in with my brothers and sisters of all hues and hear their journey. And understand that mine will never be theirs. So I don't have a right to say, I know what it's like to be in your shoes. I don't. I don't. Mm -hmm. But I, what mm -hmm. I can do is I can honor the shoes you're walking in. And I can show you yes. through my actions. I can show you through my love. I can show you through the way I raise my children. I can show you through the way I protest on my platform, the way I can. I can show you by the way I vote. I can show you by the way I demand equal rights. Even though you, Lisa, you have the rights, demand them for everyone the way you have them. So that's the way. And so let's not get caught up in a misery party. Don't accept any invitations right. to a misery party, right. a, pity, a pity party, or a blame shame party. Let's have forward moving conversations, forward moving agendas, forward moving thoughts. Shame on us for being here in 2020, but shame on us for being here in 2021, right? Yeah. And so right. that's what I'm right. committed to. Right. Right. You know, all that we've spoken about in terms of dreaming bigger and and attracting what it is that you want and, and, you know, looking through your soul's purpose in life and all the things that you've taught me about how to teach other people to treat you and so forth. I mean, the, the lessons I've learned have been have been incredible, incredibly impactful life lessons. And you have done that for so many people. So I ask you, Lisa, where, how are you walking or acting differently these days? I wouldn't think you would be. I would not think you would um, change. No, I'm are not. You? Uh, but okay. let me, so, so I am, I am, I think I'm probably more silent than ever these days. I'm spending more prayer time. Uh, than mm -hmm. ever these days um, because I want to be incredibly responsible with my voice for my black sisters and brothers, for my white sisters and brothers, for my sisters and brothers of color. I want to be responsible. I have the pleasure of having what some would call a huge platform. And I want to lead on that platform right. I want Mahatma Gandhi and Mother Teresa and Nelson Mandela and Dr. Martin Luther King, I want them to smile on my choices right now. I want to hear job well done. Now, I say that from my highest conscious place as a transformational leader, mm -hmm. as a Black woman, as a Black woman, I have been so angry and so hurt and so frustrated and so saddened 
I've been saddened that we are here still. I've been saddened. I, I've prayed for healing for George Floyd's family and for Brianna's family and for all the families of the forgotten fallen children and husbands and brothers. I've been, I've been praying for their healing because all of their wounds have been ripped open again and open wide. And for those mothers of sons who died at the hands of police officers who never even made it to the news, who never even made it to social media. Right. I cry and I pray for her. So I'm in, I, I'm in two places. As a mother of an African-American 25-year-old male child who just drove two weeks ago 20 hours with his new wife to live in a new state, I was filled with anguish and fear. I couldn't even think of the world. I couldn't, I had no, no more capacity to think of helping anybody in the midst of this until my son finished his three-day journey. Cause I'm a mother uh, of a black male child who's the, the target of this type of treatment. And so I was, I, I, I've never before had, I've, all, I've been nervous for my child in his teens and his early 20s, but I never had that. And he, he drove across country with, with his white friend. And, and I, I, I was just in a ball of fear as they strategized when the white friend would drive and when oh. the black child would drive. Now, my heart, still. My heart broke still. Still, it's very real. And that my son, who's lived a very sheltered life, who has aunties and uncles that are white. They're not biological, but they grew up with him. He grew up with him. You know my son. And um, this child, I, I, I was nervous for what he would be rudely awakened to if he, Ooh. possibly if he were the driver when and if they would have gotten pulled over. And so you, you ask, have I been the same? I've been the same, but I've all, I'm always a black woman. I'm, I'm always a mother. I'm always an activist. And so both of these blend together. So to be quite honest with you, Lisa, when it first happened, I couldn't speak because yeah. the only thing that came yeah. up was hurt, fury, and pain. That's the only thing that, that you look at the video and you're like, Oh my God, I'm sickened. Yeah. And so the responsible, the only responsible thing I could do was to pray for the families and then allow my, my awareness, to allow my awakeness, to allow my godliness, to allow my divinity to somehow seek through the pain, seek through the anger, seek through the hurt and make its way to my head so that I can I can comprise and articulate a meaningful sentence to both you and me, to both white and African-Americans. And when I did do it and I saw all the posts um, from all the white followers on my page saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. I knew who I did it. I didn't, you know, cause I, I, I had the intention, but you know, sometimes the action and the intention don't quite match. And so, um, <laughs> So, so now it was a now beautiful, I, beautiful post. Yeah. It's on Instagram. You. you could check out at least. I mean, it was so heartfelt and so beautiful. And I was right there with you in the drive. Did you and see I, my live, just, when I went live. When I went live. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry, I did. And I'm yeah. like, Where is Jelani? Where is he? Where did, where did he go? Yeah. And, <laughs> and he, he hadn't arrived yet. He hadn't I know. arrived yet. So, like, you know, and I, know. The I was the the, wanted to hear my voice. And I'm like, I, I'm a, I'm a mama first. I'm a mother of a black male child right now. I, I don't know how to be anything else. And, and then I went ahead and said, well, if they don't mind my ugly snotty cry, then I'll go, I'll do it. <laughs> but this is what is needed and real because you can't sit here and say, everything's great. Let's dream big right now, people, because we have to fix this first before we can go back after those dreams that we had lost prior to the COVID thing. I mean, we're, and, we're and we can dream big about this. We can, can okay, dream I wanted to ask you about that. 
Talk to me. We about can that. dream big about okay. this. So, so a beautiful sister on my campus, Nikki Clue, um, K L U G H. Um, she had this wild idea to get a few people together and start a million letter campaign. Mm. And, mm. Um, and she's doing it very peaceful and the campaign is a form letter. So it's really easy turnkey, um, where we send a million letters. We flash mob, uh, one state a week. So we all send letters to that one state one week, just saying it's time change yep. is here. Change, look, change is at the door. <laughs> change, <laughs> right? It's, it's, yeah. We just knock on the camera and say, change is here. And we do it in a, and she pulled together beautiful people of all nationalities, um, all cross uh, lawyers and, and doctors and politicians and put together this campaign. And the part that I'm playing in that campaign is to push it out to the world so that you could see it. And where is um, it found? The, is it, it on the, so, uh, where do we find about this? Right, right. So if you go to my Facebook page, uh, I'm going to be posting tomorrow. So Lisa Nichols fan page, go to Lisa Nichols fan page and then just keep your eyes out. I'm going to go live. I'm going to go live with her and then you'll have a link and it's organized. It's organized resolve for change each week we're going to focus on a different state and everyone's going to focus all their energy on that state, inviting that uh, mayor, inviting the police commissioner to, for reform, for to look at all of their um, uh, services and to make sure. But we're going to organize and put our energy all in the same direction at the same time over the course of 10 weeks. That's a very exciting project that I'm part of. Another project that I'm going to be bringing out or uh, that I'm going to be announcing, which is why I'd love for you to be on my fan page, Lisa Nichols fan page, is I'm going to begin to help our white allies, uh, sisters and brothers who are about anti-racism to understand how to have a conversation. Because I realize that my friends are asking for guidelines. Help me not put my foot in my mouth like so many people have done. And I don't think every person that's put their foot in their mouth and gotten a backlash that their hearts weren't in the right place. They just didn't know the words to say. So I want to help my, my community, um, my white community say, don't say this. Don't say, you know what it feels like to be me, please. Let's just be okay with that right now. Let's let difference be okay. It's always been there. It's all, it was back in the day when your grandmother sat in the living room and my grandmother had to eat in the back kitchen. It's been there. That's as much as we'd like to say it hasn't, it's been there. So let's just speak to the elephant in the room. There's a black and white and how do we coexist? And so I want to give guidelines to here are some things to say. Here's how you can enter into the conversation. If you want to ask some question, here are some healthy, good questions to ask that I don't believe will be offensive. Screened by your girl, Lisa Nichols, right? And if you get in trouble, <laughs> if you get in trouble, point them to my questions and say, Lisa Nichols said, ask this question oh, and yeah, so put it on me. What would be a beginning of that conversation? What would be a, a start? Yeah. Like what's at the top of that list? Yes. So I love the question. And so we can start here right now. Right. And yes. so at yes. the top of the list um, is acknowledgement. So write this down. If you're listening to me right now, write down, I take responsibility for dot, dot, dot. Okay. And now, okay. so you start the sentence with, I take responsibility for now, this again is where the doctor says it's going to feel better later, but right now it might hurt. Are you willing to take my hand? Right. Yeah. I take responsibility for not seeing what it's like to be in your shoes and not looking further than I have looked in the past. I take, I'm, I'm giving you examples right now, right? Yeah. yeah. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility for being privileged and what that might mean that I'm not even aware of and what I am aware of. I take responsibility for hearing about one, two or more brutal deaths to African-American males and not making it a priority back then. I take responsibility for being late to the conversation. I take responsibility 
for the pain that I may have directly through my unconsciousness or indirectly through my unconsciousness caused you. Second sentence, I know it must have made you feel. Now what's happening is in the first sentence, you're owning your part. So there needs to be a sense of ownership in any relationship, in any healing. And what we're doing right now, right at the top of this, facilitating healing across cultural lines. That's what we're doing right now. <laughs> yes, facilitating yes, healing. yes. This yes. is that time, right? So it's a yes. beautiful time filled with a lot of pain. It's a beautiful time. And I, I don't want you to, please don't take my words out of context. I'm not saying there's nothing easy about now. I'm not saying that we deserve to be here through the path that's gotten us here. But it's a beautiful time to start some healing that we've never had before. You have a black woman and a white woman with the same name, by the way, on, <laughs> on, on, on national, with international access television, talking about race and culture. And you're asking me to guide you on how to help us heal. Whew, yes. Long overdue, let's do this. Yes. Right? Yes. But let me give you, let me give you the next sentence because this is real important. There's a couple of more sentences. So the next yes. sentence is, I know it must make you feel. So this is where, Lisa, you step out of your shoes and you do your best to step in my shoes without any defending or protecting your feelings. I know, it's, yep. I, know it must make, I know it must make you feel angry that it's taken this long. Ooh, brings tears to my eyes, excuse me. Uh-huh, yeah. I know it must. I know it must make you feel frustrated that you've contributed so much to society and you're still dealing with this in 2020. Yes. I know it, I know it must make you exhausted that you have to still explain to us after all of this time how to be with you. I know it must make you feel like you just want to give up on us in this relationship because Lisa, it does at times. At times I go, what, how much more do we have to show you, tell you, love you, serve you, forgive you? I'm exhausted. And so in your ownership, I know it must make you feel exhausted that we're still here. And that we can send a man to the moon and create a cell phone, but we can't learn how to serve humanity. So true. That is so true. That is so ready. Yeah, I'm just telling you. If Wait. you want to know what will work, if you want to know what will work, not this will work. This, the next sentence. I have two more sentences for you. The next sentence is: What I'm learning is. What I'm learning is. I need to listen. Mm -hmm. What I'm learning is that I need to, I need to not act like I know what it's like to be in your shoes. I need to respect you to tell me. What I'm learning is I have a lot to learn. What I'm learning is that I want to be a new level advocate. What I'm learning is it's not equal. It's not all equal. What I'm learning is we have not made enough progress. And then the last sentence, what I'm committed to do differently. <sighs> what I'm committed to do differently is to vote with social fairness in mind. What I'm willing to do differently is hold myself and my community and my politicians accountable to being fair to you and not from a place of victim and not from a place of I'm gonna help the black person, from a place that you are my sister, you are my brother, and I'm late to this conversation, but I will never be late to it again. What I'm committed to do differently is. And so those four sentences, and if you can please write those down, post those somewhere, I take responsibility for, I know it must have made you feel what I'm learning is and what I've learned is and what I'm committed to do differently is. Mm -hmm. hmm. mm. Ooh. 
can we put this in school curriculums instead of teaching about the slavery and the Civil War? And the, I mean, can we just do that? Can we teach it in How a different that? way, please? Please. So, I mean, it's right. So, right, right. So, you just brought me to the last thing that is the solution. I'm sorry. I'm so excited about this. Like, please. You're the first interview. You're the first interview that I've accepted in the last 10 days because I needed time to hone and get into the solution. And so the last thing is exactly what you're talking about, that we need to have intimate cultural proximity. So write that down. We need to create intimate cultural proximity, which means exactly what you just said, that now we, we, we take the gap of black and white and we close the gap and we have intimate cultural proximity and we begin to learn the reason why you and I are so close and we get each other is because we've had intimate cultural proximity. I remember 13 years ago, I went to my girlfriend Anne's Jewish Passover for the first time and I was so afraid to talk. Jelani at the time was, I think he was 11, right? 11 or 12. And I didn't want him to talk. And I didn't want to talk because I didn't want to embarrass us. It, it felt like it was another language being spoken, right? Um, and they had all of the traditions of Jewish Passover. And I just sat really still like, oh, I was so nervous. I was like a fish out of water because I didn't know anything about it. Well, that's been 13 years ago. Anne is Auntie Anne to my son, Jelani. I'm Auntie Lee to her three kids. And now Jelani takes his wife without me to the, their Jewish Passover celebration. Uh. Quite comfortable. <laughs> He's at home. He can't wait to eat the boiled eggs. He loves that part because he loves the boiled eggs. And so there's a level of comfort. But my son is so comfortable taking his new wife, taking his new bride to the Jewish Passover of my girlfriend because of intimate cultural proximity that started 13 years ago. And so while now, one of the recommendations I wanna make is that not only are the police departments educated, having a culture, have a culture awareness part of their certification, in order to qualify, they have to take cultural awareness by the culture that they're studying. So if it's Asian, it's Asian, it's an Asian educator. If it's Latin, enough white people, enough of white people teaching about black history. I know. Enough, of, <laughs> enough of that done. We know it hasn't worked for a long time done. And so having Latino educators, if a, if a police officer is in a division that's in a heavily Latino population community, then they have to take a Latino cultural sensitivity training. And it needs to be taught by a Latino person, same for African-American, Asian, so on and so forth. And, and inside of that training is intimate cultural proximity. So the training isn't just an intellectual training, Lisa. The training also has time in schools, um, um, preschools, playing and serving with African-American children so that this police officer can say, hey, this little black kid actually counts to 10 the way my child does. Hey, this first grader is painting with his fingers almost the same picture for Father's Day that my child painted me for Father's Day, that there becomes an intimate proximity, not just academician and not just from an academia perspective, but experiential. That a part of, like I'm radical, you know me, I'm radical. So a part of the experience is that they, they celebrate, they have a celebration where African-American women bring in food and bring in some cornbread and bring in some greens and bring in some baked chicken and bring in some macaroni and cheese and that they're fed and they're loved in this cultural sensitivity program by the people that they're going to go, then go out and protect. What I'm simply saying is that they, we expand that, that portion of their training. In some places, we introduce it because it doesn't even exist, right? But that it becomes right. this, it becomes this, three month, six month experience where it's really hard to not see John who cooked for you in the kitchen who happened to be a black man when you are pulling over Donald on the street. It just makes it, you know, it, it makes I, I I look at I look at Jewish people in a way that they're an extension of Anne. You know, like, oh yes. I, oh hello. Oh my girlfriend 
and told me about like I, I'm all excited about because what I know. Your experience. I, yes. Because yes. Of my experience. I got I got Jewish family. I got family, right? And so and so creating that experience. Um, but for what you and I could do, um, it's having our children at a young age putting them in programs, which is why I think that there needs to be more funding for community programs that teach cultural awareness and they bust in um, 50 African-American kids, 50 white kids, 50 Latino kids, and 50 Pacific Islander kids, and they have a week together and their parents have a week together. It needs to be full submergence for a week funded government, make it happen. And we get to live together, play together, laugh together, create together. And we have what I call intimate cultural proximity. Ah, that's, I love that picture. That's a beautiful picture of paint. And also the art that could come into that too. I see mm -hmm. art happening that's just phenomenal that could mm -hmm. bring, and just be, and I love that you shared this story of the Passover because it's, when you're in a place of of love, when you really are in a place, when you truly love the people you are with, there's respect that is a given. Yeah. There's yeah. honor that is a given. Yeah. It's You don't even think yeah. about it. There's admiration that is a given. And those are not things that you have to try to make up or strive for. They're mm -hmm. already there. So if but we can have get to that... Yeah, you have to be intentional about that. It's not accidental. Yes, you, yes. You also fall in love, though, and that's also sometimes unintentional because you fall in love with the the human being. You know, you fall right, in love I with who they are. What, but when I say intentional, and Lisa, know that I'm looking through my lenses, that I had to be intentional about going to her house for Passover knowing that we were going to be the only two black people there, knowing that we were going to know nothing, okay. knowing that okay. um, yes. everyone, everyone was, and, and maybe not everyone, but a lot of people um, who were there were trying to make us comfortable. Right. <laughs> right. They were trying yeah. to, they were trying to love us because they yes. knew we got a water. And so it took great intention. I'm going to tell you something else. The first seven years of us being in our organization together Every time it was time for us to meet, sis, it took great intention for me to come. Wow. Mm, took, so I can see it's that. not unintentional. Yes. It took great intention for me to come. Every time I did an event and I looked up and again, I was the only person. Uh, every time a black woman or a black man is on a council and they're the only person, it's a it's a it's an honor and it's a weight to bear because now I'm the voice of, I'm the voice for. You know, um, and, 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 and even in our community circle, anytime something came up about the culture, it, it, the look was on me to represent. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. is with intention. Um, and, and then there becomes a time where effortless love occurs. Effortless love occurs. But I, we have to, I have to consciously get to that because before that happens, Lisa, I'm in protection. I'm in, yes. let me make sure yes. I don't put myself in a position to get hurt again. Let me make sure yes. that I, not that I don't want to love you. You know, I want to love you, but the first law of nature is self-preservation. And what you yes. see now, or you, you understand what I'm saying? And yeah, so I do, I, I do, I do, I do. I see that now for the first time, Lisa. I do. I can see you preparing, getting on the plane. I can see you protecting yourself with meetings. I can see it. I can see it. You yes. also, you also have seen me. Um, I want to protect my friends. So when we're at events and it's, it's drinking in the evening, I always leave because I don't want, I don't want alcohol to cause you to say something wow. that you don't remember tomorrow and I can't forget because I'm so oh wow and so I'm constantly protecting and I'm I'm only doing it because evidence have shown me that I need to because there was a time when I didn't think about it and then boom and so I'm not saying I wear I wear yeah. or I pull the color card I'm just saying that I don't have the luxury of walking through life without the awareness it's it's the definition of privilege 
Like it, like as much as I hate to say that word, cause I'm all about an equal empowerment kind of girl. You ask, why have I been on this journey of empowerment and finding my voice and helping others find their voice? And yes. because for so long, I didn't know how to use my voice. I'm the girl that in fifth grade, I tried out for Charlie's Angels and I won every event. I won the, the race. I run the, I, I won the roll, stop and freeze. I, I won the jumping over the chair when we were trying out for the Bionic Woman. And when they picked the Charlie's Angels and the Bionic Woman, and I didn't get picked, and a lot of kids began to boo. I was in fifth grade. And I, I mustered up the courage to go to the judge and say, why did I not get picked? And the judge said in a flippant way, well, which one do you look like, Lisa? You uh... can't get picked. And then she went on to say, but you can try again next year if you look like her. For years... I, was, I wasn't angry at anyone white. I was angry at myself. I was angry at my brown skin. I was angry at my full lips and my round hips and my kinky hair. I was angry at my mother and my father and my community. So you, we, I, 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 this has been long standing. I didn't know where it came from. I didn't know that I just wanted to be the blind woman. I just wanted to fit in as a kid. I just want, so it hasn't been a luxury that I didn't have to think about it before I could before I could understand what it was, it came popping in my face. It never, uh, it didn't say black. It didn't say black and white. It said, how can you be like them? So I wasn't even mad at being black. I was just mad at being dark, too dark to be Charlie's angels. Right. And, that, and that, shaped, that childhood experience shaped you before you even shaped, knew. Shaped, just shaped. When I tell you, when I tell you I was 23 years old in front of about 4,000 people, Lisa, and I delivered a riveting, amazing poem and I got a standing ovation. And as I walked through the, the audience and everyone's giving me accolades and it was totally fine when all the black people were giving me accolades. Then I hear this voice and I feel this hand on my shoulder and I hear this voice saying, you were amazing. And I turn around and I looked in the eyes of television's Lindsay Wagner, Bionic Woman. <laughs> and every emotion from fifth grade, now I'm in my 20s now. Every oh my emotion. God. Me, and I start bawling right there. I just start <laughs> bawling right there. When I tell you, I hadn't, oh, I didn't even have a conscious awareness that that was still in my cellular memory. Cellular and, body, um, yep. Mm -hmm, your body mm -hmm. memory so how many things and that's where you see all the anger coming from so to all my white brothers and sisters who are asking the question why is it so much anger it's because the fifth grade experience is coming back the yes. seventh grade experience is coming back it's all these years of suppress it's like if you've been suppressed for speaking and then you find your voice you don't want to whisper you want to scream right. at least right. until you right. get used to your voice Right. Um, and so that's what you're seeing. That's all the buildup you're seeing is everyone has a fifth, not everyone, but many, many people have a fifth grade experience like mine. The only reason why I don't even, I, I don't cry anymore when I tell the story is because I've told the story so much because I'm in the healing business. And so I kept saying, give your story life so you can find the healing, so you can find the grace so that you can find the message, so you can find the lesson. I searched for mine. Um, and so people now, uh, after this, get to search for their reasoning. And But right now, they're just in the expression, in the freedom to say it out loud and not to be thought of as crazy anymore or, or, yes. or negated anymore. Yes. yes, yes. And the voices are absolutely, incredibly moving, beautiful, impassioned angry angst it's it's so it just pierces your heart and i and i yeah. love all that i'm seeing and all that's being shared and it it's it's amazing i i have to ask you because you are that person who has had that healing conversation and you gave us some incredible examples and ideas of things to do just if you can give me a visualization a picture in your mind of what this, how this looks in a year, Lisa, hmm. just give hmm. me a picture because I want to go there. Yeah. Um, so here's the beauty. Um, our children don't know divide to the degree that our parents did. 
And so our children live in a global society because of social media. And that's why you have more blended families and marriages now than ever <laughs> um, because it's, it's less of the it factor. And so all we need to do is for us folk over 40 to get it, <laughs> right? All, all, that's all we need to do. And so, cause our babies, our babies are going to be okay as long as they're connected to the world and stay connected to the world. And so a year from now, I see, um, I see servant leaders have risen and they're a stand for social change and they've made social change and social justice and um, uh, the voice of everyone the norm. Now, in a year, we're still working with policy. We're still working with systems. We still have to eradicate some uh, contaminated spaces. That, that won't be done by then. But it will be super unpopular. In a year, the hater of equality will have to hide. In the ah, year. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. That's going to be a real, but they'll have to hide. And, and that's big movement. That's big yes. movement. And, and yeah, and, and, and we will stand together and, 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 and just put, put your hand up. I want to put your hand up right here. We got to play with it. Now, do your other hand and face me. Do your other hand. Okay. Oh, and, there we go. Yeah, and come back a little bit. <laughs> Mirror I know, my, I think my images. Turn it the other way. <laughs> right, right. There you go. There you go. Push. There you go. <laughs> this is us in a year globally. Yeah. This, That's is us. Us. this That's is us. That's us. This is yes. us. And, and, yes. and those of us who have been committed to be a part of the change, we will have found our stride. So for all of us leaders who are saying, I must be a part of this and I'm still figuring out what to do. Be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Have grace with yourself. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And you are a part of it. And we will catch our stride. Right now, we're just lacing up our shoes. Right now, we're just putting on our long-term gear and putting on some good deodorant. Right now, <laughs> yes. right now, we're just eating or drinking a breakfast of champions. Right now, yes. we're just right now, we're just taking our B12 sublingual under the tongue, getting ready for the thing that we gotta get ready for. And so just know <laughs> that that we are sending a call out saying, gladiators, mount up. We need right? you. <laughs> yes. Right. As my friend Sean Smith says, cape on and clock in. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love you, Lisa. Lisa, I love you so much. I thank you. This You're welcome. is so powerful. This is called transformational media. This is media in action. You are brilliant, golden. Yes. Bright. I'm happy to come back anytime you need. I'm happy to come back anytime you need to help us write this down because this is important if you're listening to my voice to help us continue to have forward moving thoughts, forward moving conversations, followed by forward moving actions. And I, if I just can, if I just can leave you with one piece of advice, don't click yes to the misery party evite online. Okay. So yeah, okay. you're going to get invitations from everyone. It's like literally the most popular party right now. So while you need to be aware and awake, you need to be conscious and have courageous conversations. Please don't mistake that for clicking yes on the misery party evite, the shame blame evite, the, 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 the misery um, busters barbecue. Don't <laughs> click yes on evite. 
that I want you yes. to be because 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 gotcha. sister, I understand where you are, but your heart was really heavy. And while that's necessary, remember the doctor says, you're going to feel better, yeah. but this might hurt, right? That's okay. You want to make sure you don't mistakenly take out real estate in Miseryville, in Shameville, okay. Okay. in Blaineville. Okay. So okay. just check yourself periodically and go, hold on, where am I? I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm, I'm great. I'm good with the uncomfortable conversation. I am good with it. I am. I know you are. I you, am. you are, you are the gladiators that we need. And, and let me just leave you with this. Not many black women, um, will want to say this. And, um, and I'm, I'm comfortable with the truth. Um, as much as Black women are independent. We have had to be independent. We've had to be strong. Sister, we need you right now. Mm. Mm. Oh, wow. Thank you. You won't, you uh, won't hear it. You won't hear it said a lot. And mm -hmm. it's not because we don't love you. Because we it. don't know if we don't know if you'll show up when it becomes uncomfortable because this hasn't occurred before. Mm -hmm. And so just know that okay. I'm gonna say what we won't say. We need you. We need you at the tables that we won't be sitting at. We need you in the conversations that we won't be included in or we don't even want to go to because you're there for us. We need you. There is a there is a new face on the Underground Railroad. It has got above ground. It's it's now in Audis <laughs> on the internet, and you are a part of it. <laughs> yeah. Look, we need a new freaking table, Lisa, where you're at the head of it. So let's just make that one happen instead. <laughs> okay. I, I, I appreciate what you said, but we need a brand new table. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. And so yeah. when I say we need you, we need you to go into the old room with the old table and everybody around it with your sledgehammer and break the table Close so nobody it. else can. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. I, I don't even want to be, I don't even want to be at that table, to be honest with you. That table is gone. All right. I love you and I thank you. And we'll follow you on social so we can find out about this incredible, beautiful movement. And please, please. Keep Lisa Nichols fan page. Yeah, I love you. Thank you for being willing to have dynamic dialogue and courageous conversations. And I hope that we get to have this again. I love you. And to every Always. person listening, every person listening, I'm sending cyber hugs around your heart and your soul and your body. Take care. Oh, take care. God bless. God bless. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know how to say until next time, please, please just stay aware. Mm -hmm.